If you stay out in the sun for too long, there are a couple of common changes that can take place in your skin. Sun tan and sun burn. But what's actually going on in your skin when this happens? And what are the fundamental differences between the two? They both start from the same point, notably light, specifically the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. This form of light can penetrate deep into the skin and cause changes there. The precise nature of these changes determine if you can get a tan or a burn. The amount of ultraviolet light that penetrates deep into your skin is affected by two major factors. The first of these, of course, is the amount of light that's around in the first place. As it may seem obvious, it isn't quite that straightforward. The amount of ultraviolet light that will reach your skin varies considerably due to factors relating to your location and also the time of day. The key thing with ultraviolet light is that the more the atmosphere the light has to pass through, the less of it will reach your skin. And even within ultraviolet light, the more damaging shorter wavelength UVB rays are more affected by the amount of atmosphere and are less harmful longer wavelength UVA rays. So at sea level, you're more protected than you are on a mountain top. And additionally, on a mountain you may also be surrounded by snow, you can reflect the ultraviolet rays, which is why skiers often get those infamous goggle tan markings. Also, the time of day is critical. Early in the morning and late in the afternoon, due to the angle at which the sun is in the sky, some rays again have to pass through more of the atmosphere, again reducing your exposure to ultraviolet light, paired with at around midday when the sun can be virtually overhead. The position of the sun, of course, leads us to the next point. That's your geographic location and the time of year. The closer you are to the equator, the closer the sun gets to being directly overhead at midday, again meaning light has less of the atmosphere to pass through, making people especially vulnerable between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Those outside the tropics, again, the sun is going to be closer to being directly overhead at midday during the summer than it is during the winter. So the risks for overexposure to ultraviolet light are greater in the summer than they are in the winter. So if you're in England on an early winter morning, you're going to be exposed to very little ultraviolet light. Whereas if you're on the top of a mountain, say in Peru, at noon, you're going to be exposed to a rather extreme amount of ultraviolet light. However, as we all know, two people can be both out in the sun at the same time, in the same place, the same, and get totally different reactions. It's generally down to the differences within their skin. Now, for various groups of people who evolved around the equator, of course, being vulnerable to ultraviolet rays is a distinct disadvantage. So, they evolved to be more resistant to this form of damage. The key way they did this was to increase the amount of melanin in the skin. There's specifically a type of melanin called eumelanin. This eumelanin protects the deeper layers of the skin by absorbing or scattering the incoming UV rays, resulting in far less damage being caused by the UV rays to the skin. Increased amounts of eumelanin also result in the skin looking darker, so those people whose origins are from around the equator have far darker skin than those towards the poles. Now you might think that those people further out from the equator may also benefit from having darker skin. And they would if ultraviolet light levels were the only evolutionary pressure on skin coloration. However, sunlight and the skin also react to produce vitamin D, which a healthy body needs to survive. Because high levels of eumelanin block out some of the light, they also inhibit the production of vitamin D. Now, if you're in a location which has lots of sunlight all year round, it doesn't really present much of a problem, so you can still produce enough vitamin D for your body's needs. However, further out from the equator, this would be a significant problem. So rather than have large amounts of eumelanin in the skin, these people have a greater quantity of pheomelanin, a chemical which can turn the skin or hair red. This means that people are far better at making use of the limited light available to produce required amounts of vitamin D. This also does mean that those people with high levels of pheomelanin can be vulnerable to skin damage from excessive amounts of UV light. Those people with particularly high levels of pheomelanin, as you might already have worked out, have ginger coloured hair or freckles on the skin. It is, of course, possible to have a skin which produces very little melanin at all. These people have a condition commonly known as albinos and have numerous problems relating to the lack of melanin in their skin. So, all this shows how the amount of UV light getting into skin can vary 
next part is to look at what's actually happening as the UV light interacts with the skin. Again, we need to look at the two distinct types of UV light, UVA and UVB. Now, the UVA form of light is a more penetrating form of light, finds it easier to only penetrate our atmosphere, but also things like glass and our skin. However, whilst it's a more penetrating form of UV light, it's also a less damaging form. You basically need to be exposed to about 1,000 times the amount of UVA light to do the damage that UVB light will do. However, UVA light will create what's known as oxidative stress within the skin, which is used at excessive levels, can be damaging to the body and can cause some of the same health problems associated with UVB light. The oxidative stress results in a fairly rapid reaction as melanin in the skin is oxidised it turns a dark colour. It also may result in melanin being released from where it's stored, being more widely distributed around the skin. This, of course, will turn the skin a darker shade or become tanned. The oxidative stress is an indirect form of damage to the body. If kept to reasonable levels, the body's repair mechanisms can normally cope given enough time between exposures. But it is also likely to lead to skin aging more rapidly than would otherwise be the case. So that then brings us to the UVB light. Now whilst this is less penetrating, less common at ground level than UVA light, it also represents a more direct threat to the body. UVB light can directly damage the DNA strands within the skin cells. And the cell's reaction to this damage depends on what happens later on. Now it is possible that either damage within the cell can be repaired, or that damage may be done to a redundant part of the DNA strand. The skin cell can actually continue virtually operating as normal. Alternatively, cell function may be significantly compromised by damaging the DNA. And the cell may recognize it become damaged. In order to prevent that damage from becoming a larger problem later on, the cell basically commits suicide. Finally, the cell's function again may be significantly compromised by the damage done to the DNA. But the cell fails to recognize the damage. And this, in turn, may lead to the cell becoming cancerous. Now, if the exposure to UVB light is severe, and many of the skin cells die off, this will cause the flaking and peeling of the skin and other visible signs of what's known as sunburn. With so many of the skin cells dying off, the body then needs to rapidly replace those skin cells. One of the key actions of the body is to ensure this area now has greater access to the blood supply than would normally be the case, leading to the skin becoming a lot warmer and redder than it would normally be. The body will also react on a longer term basis to prevent this damage occurring again. So, like exposure to UVA light, can result in a tan being produced. However, in the case of UV light, the tan does take longer to appear, but because the threat to the body is greater, the tan resulting from exposure to UVB light lasts significantly longer than that from UVA light. The exposure to high levels of UVB light does significantly increase your risk of developing skin cancer. Getting a sunburn itself, as you've seen, doesn't itself lead to skin cancer. Instead, the more sunburn you have, the more likely it is that the other surviving skin cells have suffered DNA damage, which can cause skin cancer. To reduce your risk of skin cancer, it's best to limit your exposure to UVB light, either by avoiding the times and locations where UVB light levels will be high, or by protecting your skin with screens and layers of clothing. Additionally, the healthy skin and body regulate your exposure to UVA light dependent upon your skin type.